Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. This is one of the most powerful and most beautiful written scriptures, in my opinion, in the Bible. And when we understand it, the meaning behind this scripture and what it means for us as believers, it is life altering, life changing, it's powerful. And those who are not Christians today, those who may not have ever put your faith in Christ, I just want you to know this scripture is very persuasive on helping you know what God has done for his people, for the world. And it's a beautiful um, culmination of biblical history in the scripture today. Uh, Paul really wraps up a lot about what happened in the Old Testament and he brings it to the church and he's reminding the church of everything they've inherited because of what Jesus did for them. So definitely tune in, get your notepads ready. Uh, if you don't mind, click share if you're on Facebook or if you have a chance to just hit share on the platform. Uh, get this out there for everyone to be a part of this message. The, there's some literary uh, context, so literature context that we need to understand on the scripture moving forward. Uh, this scripture, uh, Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, is 12 verses of just a never-ending sentence. It is 202 words in the Greek with no periods. Like it's a grammar teacher's nightmare, okay? And it's just, it doesn't, you can't read it in the paragraphs that it is segregated in. You actually have to read it with, uh, with one read to get the entire context. And here's the situation with this, is, is basically, uh, it, it's, it takes your breath away how beautiful it is, literally. Try to read this with one breath without stopping. That's what uh, Paul pretty much is um, writing here, is this long, what they call a long praise hymn, a praise song about all of these spiritual benefits and blessings that God has given us. We misinterpret the scripture if we don't read it in its entire context, if we don't read it fully all the way through. You're actually um, bound to misinterpret what it means if you don't read verses three through 14. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna read through it. I'm not gonna try to do it with one breath because I will pass out on the stage in front of everyone here. Um, but we're gonna read through it and then I'm gonna explain some more and help you understand some difficult parts of it. And then I wanna help us apply it to our lives. What, is, what are the spiritual blessings that Paul is talking about? And you will notice, by the way, that there's a dominating theme in the scripture and it has to do with life in Christ or the version I'm using, the NLT version, it uses the word united in Christ or in Christ or through Christ. So there's a dominating theme that everything that you receive from God is only received or inherited through faith in Christ. That is such a key takeaway from this lesson today. And I do feel like a weatherman. This is so weird. So, all right, here we go. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. So there's one of your in Christ verses there. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. So another in Christ phrase. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. 
At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. That's a, that, that would be a long breath, by the way, to try to read this all with one breath. He goes on to say this, and now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised. It's a deposit, so to say, uh, to give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so that we would praise and glorify God him. By the way, the idea of praise and glorify him is mentioned three times in this praise him and song that, that Paul is saying. I want to go back uh, because there is some difficult, uh, I would say, there's some confusion on some things and I'm actually going to go forward, then I'll go back. And I want to show you what we're seeing here is what we call redemptive history, redemptive historical history. In other words, the story of the Bible where God is redeeming mankind because of sin and what sin did and how we, how we disobey God and how we damaged our relationship with him. And God redeems us, but he's not done even after Christ has died, in fact, because Christ has died through Christ, he's still redeeming and saving people, praise God, and he's not done yet. And so this is the scripture that is actually in, in mind when Paul is talking about this in this first chapter. And this is what it says. The Lord had said to Abram, this is a promise to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. And what he's talking about here in other versions is you'll be a blessing to all nations, all people. What we see here is that God did choose to bless and to work through the Jewish people. That God did choose that he would be, he would claim the Jews as his people and that through them, all nations would be blessed. All nations could be saved. And so Abram, he, he follows God. Uh, he, Abram was chosen, called to be this, this person in a family line. By the way, he had no kids. So it was like, how is this going to work? He questioned God whether this plan was actually going to take place. This promise was actually going to take place because he had no children. He had children later on. Uh, in, in his later years with his wife, Sarah. And they, he, basically what happened is after that, it just took off. And he became a, a, a man of many nations, of many descendants. And what we see is throughout the entire Old Testament is that God is fulfilling this promise that through his people, the door would be open for others to receive him. And it was through the line of Abraham through the Davidic line as well, that Jesus would come about and he comes onto the scene in the New Testament. So what we're seeing here is redemptive history to save mankind from sin. And here's the thing about Abraham. He was chosen to do that, but he had to believe God first in order to be credited righteousness. And that's in Genesis 15. Because Abraham trusted God, because Abraham obeyed, God said, okay, you are righteous, you are saved. So before Abraham even believed, he was chosen for a task. And his task was to, really the calling on his life was to help save the world through his, through his line and in, in, uh, heritage. And so through, through his family would come Jesus and I'm sorry, I lost the last verse here. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Well, there you have it. So it's amazing scripture that through Abraham, everyone would have access to God. 
Now, what's important to note in our scripture today from Ephesians 1, 3 through 14, verse 13 is this, this hinge of all of these blessings, all these spiritual blessings we're gonna talk about today come because of Christ and by faith in Christ we can have them. It says here in verse 13, and now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, then he identified you, marked, claimed you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. Notice it says, and now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, then, I put, that's my emphasis, then he identified you, he marked or claimed you. To be in Christ, to receive all that Christ has done for us, we had to hear the truth and believe in it, and then you have the inheritance. So I want to go back real quick to some difficult scriptures. There is a lot of debating in Christian circles about a couple words in the Bible, election and predestination. And if we don't understand the, the redemptive history of this scripture, then we will miss the point of what those words are actually talking about. I want to explain to you what Paul and he's saying here in verse four particularly. He says, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ. What happens is a lot of people will put a period right there and you shouldn't. And remember, a lot of us will read this and just break it into paragraphs and forget verse 13. How we are in Christ is by believing in Christ. So what he's saying here is even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. So God chose to help us become like Jesus before the world began, his love. He predestined us to become like someone. If you go into verse five, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself. Now we can put a period there and go, he did it all before Christ, but no, it says through Jesus Christ. So how is one in Christ? Verse 13 showed us belief in Jesus makes us in Christ. So what is Paul trying to say here? Paul is not trying to say that you've been chosen uh, the, the focus here is being salvation. What he's saying is, is you've been chosen in Christ, so through faith in Christ, to be holy and without fault in his eyes. If you were to look at it this way, God sees Christ from this angle. We see Jesus from that angle. And when we put our faith in Christ, we are now chosen to become holy and without fault in his eyes. We are now part of his family. I like how one person put it. He said this, these verses are not about God predetermining which individuals will be in Christ and which ones won't. It is about God predetermining what will become of those who are in Christ through faith. So it's not about God predetermining who, who will come in Christ and who won't. He's saying this is what will become of them when they are in Christ. So that's an important takeaway for us today that we understand this. That's being consistent with the scripture that we have here. Um, so basically every blessing, everything the Gentiles inherited here and everything else they are to enjoy and do in the rest of this letter hinges on whether they are in Christ or not. Well, we actually need to understand the Davidic, or I'm sorry, the redemptive history a little bit further. Let me go further in. And this is what it says here in verse 10. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. Furthermore, because we're united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for he chose us in advance, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. God's purpose was that we Jews who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. 
So Paul is talking about the Jews and he's saying they were the first to receive. And that's why the Bible will say many times, first for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But then he goes on to say this, and now you Gentiles, who are Gentiles? Anyone who's not a Jew is a Gentile. Anyone who is not of the Jewish nation is a Gentile. So all nations to Paul are Gentiles. And what it is, is, is Paul has been called to bring this glorious, amazing, gracious message to the Gentiles because God predestined that they too would be included into this redemption uh, salvation and into the redemption. So they're included in this amazing redemptive story and historical promise with Abraham. So in a nutshell, God has predestined that through Christ, all may know him, all may come to him, all can be saved. John three sixteen for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall be saved and have eternal life. This is a whoever uh, point here that, that Paul is trying to make. And so now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own. Wow. So that's encouraging because God used, God, God is fulfilling the promise to Abraham that I will use you to be a blessing to all nations. And Paul, this is really ironic. Paul was the most devout Jew. He was like, he followed everything to the letter of the law and God saves him. And he did not, he, he was so faithful to, to be, you know, um, he wasn't big on Gentiles, okay? He wasn't big on caring about them. He was very pious about his upbringing and who he was as a Jew. But God called him to go to the Gentiles and share this mysterious plan that you also can be included in Christ, that you too, Jesus has died for you as well. And that through Christ, you receive this inheritance and that you too can, have, can enjoy all the spiritual blessings that God has for you. So what, what's our position at Calvary on this topic? Well, I wanna be clear that we at Calvary wanna be as close to the scripture as possible. And we realize that there's a lot of tension and some debating on election and predestination. But what we see in the scripture is that God wants all mankind to be saved. And that's our position at Calvary, that God has predestined through Christ that we would become holy and blameless, that we would become part of his family. And so the, the hinge, once again, comes down to verse uh, 13, that all who believe are in Christ and we are adopted in Christ, that we are part of his family and that we've been chosen to become holy and blameless. So that's our position here at Calvary. With that said, what are the spiritual realities that Paul is reminding the church of? Because that's what Paul is doing here. He's having to remind the church of all these spiritual realities they have because they're living in the world. But the thing is, the world can really wear you down and you forget who you are in Christ. And so he strengthened his church and we're going to look at it from the beginning. So you guys ready? Here we go. All praise to God, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Church, because we are united in Christ, because of what Jesus did for us and we accept that truth and we believe in that truth, we have spiritual blessings that this world cannot provide. You will not find these spiritual blessings in this world. And now you may be wondering, what are they? Well, that's exactly what Paul begins to break down in the following verses. So here are the blessings that we have as we move in. And believers in Christ have spiritual and heavenly blessings you will not find in this world. 
He goes on to say this, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. This gave God great pleasure to do this, to make you holy in Christ. So today, because of Jesus, because of faith in Christ, you can say, I am holy in Christ. You can say that I am blameless in Christ, that God sees me as blameless and holy, and that you are adopted in Christ. What I love about this verse is, it says that it gave God great pleasure to do this. God is so happy to include you into the family of God. God is so happy to change your life. Like you are, you ready for this? You are wanted. Think about that for a second. You are wanted by the God of the universe. Amen? Like you're not abandoned. You've been reclaimed, redeemed, washed, and restored by the blood of Jesus as if you were never damaged in the first place. How good is that? That's the spiritual reality, not just for the Jews, but for all nations. If you believe in Christ, you are cleaned up, reclaimed, restored as if you were never damaged at all. And that's hard to wrap your mind around. That's hard to believe. You know, we have to convince ourselves there a little bit on that one. But that's how God views you because you are in Christ. He sees you differently. Be encouraged today that the God of the universe wants you and he wanted you so much that he chose through Abraham to be a blessing to all nations and that blessing came in the baby in Jesus Christ. And he was raised, he died on the cross, he rose again, so he lived, he died, he rose again to give us access to this kind of life, to be completely restored. Praise God for that. He goes on to say this, what other spiritual blessings? So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. So grace has been poured out to you. He is so rich in kindness. Kindness has been poured out to us and grace that he has purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. You didn't do that. We can't take credit for that. Only Jesus did that. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. So what does that mean? What is that verse trying to say? Paul is saying you are free in Christ. Church, to the, to the Ephesian church, you are free in Christ. To the Gentiles, you are free in Christ. That's who he's talking about. He's talking to the Gentiles here. And he's saying that you are free in Christ. Well, guess what? We are too. We are free in Christ. I am forgiven in Christ. I am redeemed in Christ. Remember, the condition here is, have I believed in Christ? Am I in a relationship with Christ? If I'm in a relationship with him, these are the spiritual blessings I have inherited. I am free from sin. I am no longer a slave to sin. I am free. Do we live that way though? Do we believe that in such a way that we actually live free how cool would it be to be walking around actually living free instead of being trapped by addictions and sinful habits and issues? But the reality is God has set you free when you're in Christ. We have to believe that and we gotta live that way, that you have been forgiven. Do you believe you are forgiven? If you believe you're forgiven, do me a favor right now on Facebook, if you're on your tablet, your phone, or on YouTube, put yes, I am forgiven. Yes, I am free. Put that in there. Because we need to believe this as truth because it actually happened. When we believed in Christ, we were redeemed. Again, we were restored as if we were never damaged. That's powerful. And thank God for that. Ephesians 9, he goes on to share some more blessings. God has now revealed to us his mysterious will regarding Christ, which is to fulfill his own good plan. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ, everything in heaven and on earth. We're gonna find out as we go through this book, there's a huge message on unity in the family of God. 
that God wants to unite all of us in his family, every nation, not just the Jews get to be included, but every Gentile nation, every color, every race, every tongue, every people is in this big family of God. Praise God. Why? Because of Jesus Christ. So we're going to come under his authority. He's going to bring everything together. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, verse 11, we have received an inheritance from God. Like God has, God has an inheritance for you. Anyone leave anything for you before? Isn't it cool to, like, to receive that inheritance? And it's what a blessing it is that they would think of you. Well, the God of the universe has an inheritance for you. For he chose us in advance and it makes everything work out according to his plan. Another predestination scripture here, election scripture here saying, and he's talking to the Gentiles. He's saying, not just the Jews have been chosen, but now all people have the opportunity to be in the family of God if you believe in Jesus Christ. Praise God for that. So he goes on to say this, God's purpose was that we Jews who were the first to trust in Christ would bring praise and glory to God. So it was through the Jews that he'd bring praise and glory to God. There's that other one that I mentioned before. There's three of them. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. I want to hang out real quick on verse 13 again. Look how important it is that we preach the truth and we share the word of God. Because it says, you Gentiles have also heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And because of that, they were able to believe in Jesus Christ and inherit all these blessings. Do you know one of the reasons why they heard the good news? It's because God chose Paul to go to them. God chose and called him for a task. Paul had to believe still. Paul was, Paul was stopped on that road, but he had to believe. He had to obey God and believe. We talked about that a couple weeks ago, that our obedience proves our faith, right? So Paul had to believe, and Paul had to preach the gospel. He had to go where God called him to go. And Paul went to the Gentiles. He lived around Ephesus for three, almost three years. And when he preached the truth, the Holy Spirit worked on these people's lives. The Holy Spirit works through the gospel. The gospel, the Bible is alive and well. When we share the truth, when we share scripture, when we share the Bible with people, we are making it the opportunity for them. We're giving them an opportunity to hear the gospel because faith comes by hearing, right? As the scripture says, to hear the gospel and then believe in the gospel. So Paul is walking out his purpose in life his calling in life, and he goes to a people that he tried to stay away from. Wow. He goes to a people that he had prejudice against, discriminated against. God saved him so much that he is now living around them for three years, fulfilling his calling and task from God to preach to the Gentiles, to reveal this mysterious plan. No longer is it mysterious. No longer. The mysterious plan is Jesus, in Jesus, you can have eternal life. Thank God for that. So he identified you as his own. Well, this is interesting. Uh, what we see in those few verses is that you are claimed in Christ. Think about that for a second. I am not an orphan. I'm adopted. I am claimed. I'm not lost in this world. I have been claimed by God if I'm in Christ. I am valuable. An inheritance has been given to me in Christ. I am accepted in Christ. God accepts you. Again, the key is when you are in Christ right here, that's the break. When you are in Christ, you have all of these spiritual blessings. And that's why verse 13 is such a huge hinge factor in the scripture because he's saying, he's already talking to people who are believers. He's already talking to faithful followers as we learned last week. He's talking to saints in this letter right now. And he's reminding them, this is who you are because of what Jesus did. And when you believed in him, when you believed what he did for you, this is what you inherited. 
You were claimed. You're no longer an orphan. You are adopted. You are valuable to God. And you are accepted in Christ. And I love this. And now you Gentiles have heard the truth, the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit whom he promised long ago. I've read that verse so many times. You're probably getting tired of me reading it. But he goes on to say this, the spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased to be his own people. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. There it is again, praise and glorify him. Wow, think about this for a second. Uh, Just so you know, in this scripture, we have a Trinitarian emphasis. The Trinity has been emphasized. We see God, we see Jesus, and now we see the Holy Spirit. Um, Let me show you what I concluded with that. We inherit and experience all of God in Christ. The Trinity. Think about this for a moment. Everything about God, everything, himself, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, his whole self, he gave for us. And in Christ, we get to enjoy all that God has for us. You know what that makes me want to do? That makes me want to give all I am to God as well. That makes me want to give back everything that I can to God. In Christ, you get to experience the fullness of God, the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's amazing. So God gave us every spiritual blessing. Why did he do this? What is Paul trying to say? In the rest of this letter, He wants us to understand these spiritual blessings so that our lives, our actions, our songs, like our singing, our marriages, our kids, our work, and our victory in battles would bring praise and glory to him. This is what we're going to unpack in this letter is these different areas of our lives, our actions, even songs, even our marriages, our kids, our work and our victory in spiritual warfare, we see later on in this book, he wants you to understand that you have all these spiritual blessings. Why? To bring glory to him. Look at it again, right here. Oh, I went the wrong way, sorry. I messed up, my bad. Here we go. Right here. He did this so we would praise and glorify him. So while he did all of this, for you at the same time it's meant to be for him so that people would be would see God we are to make God famous in our world Paul was a changed life to the Gentiles they were probably rubbing their eyes going is this really Paul talking to me is this really Paul reaching out to me obviously this dude changed this guy changed and because he did and because Paul was changed by Jesus He was bringing glory to God. So remember, here's here's our closing statement. Remember all that you are and all that you have in Christ as you live in this world. Why does this scripture strengthen us? Why does this scripture help us be stronger? Well, first of all, let me say this, that this scripture to me Uh, really drives home the point that God wants all to be saved and that God has made a way for all people to come to him. But it's under one condition. Do we even accept and believe that gift? Do we even believe and accept that Jesus has made a way to be a child of God? We have to come to that decision just like the Gentiles did in verse 13. That God, before the world began, wanted all people to come to him. All people. That was his plan from the beginning. He used, he chose, he chose a special people for himself, the Jews. He chose to use his son, Jesus. And then he chose to call and use Paul to tell everyone, you are welcome to come in. This is what I have for you. They already were experiencing it because they believed in Jesus. For us believers, first of all, know this. We live in this world, but we're not of this world. 
We're in Christ as we live in this world. If I were to draw a circle around me right now, I'm in Christ while I live in this world. Everywhere I go, people in this room right now, they are in Christ as we are in this world. You know what the struggle with that though is? This world can wear us down, can't it? This world can, can make us get confused. It can make us forget about our spiritual blessings and who we are in Christ, all that we have in Jesus. And I think what Paul is doing here is, Paul is reminding his church, because he's not gonna see them. He's reminding them who you are as you live in this world. You are in Christ. You are one of God's children as you live in this world. So live like God's child. Live like his children. Remember that. Church, and those of you who are watching who may not be a Christian or a believer, our world is confused about who we're supposed to be. Our world is confused about why we're here and where we're going. The Bible's not confused on that. And Paul doesn't want his church to get confused because they live in a polytheistic world, a world of many gods were all around them many Greek gods and different uh, people to believe in and follow. And he didn't want them to be confused. He was saying that this is who you are when you believed in Jesus. And there's no rivals to Jesus. There is no one competing with him. Praise God for that. So maybe today um, you're on a journey of seeking more of God. Maybe you haven't even heard about all these spiritual blessings that you have in Christ. You've never inherited them yet. I'm gonna encourage you today to see how amazing and beautiful God is that before the world began, he wanted you to be part of his family. He made a way to, he knew that sin was gonna damage our relationship and he knew he was gonna use Jesus he knew he was going to use the people of, of the Israelites, the Jews, and Jesus to include us into his family if we believe. If we hear this truth today, which you are hearing right now, and if you would believe that Jesus had done this for you, that he died on the cross and rose again for you, all you must do now is believe in what he's done for you. And through that, you are saved, you are adopted. You are set free from your sin. You have inherited amazing, an amazing family and amazing eternal inheritance that you will never find anywhere in this world. And he's calling you home today. He's calling you to come back. And he wants to change you in such a way as if you've never left him, as if you were never damaged in the first place. So would you close your eyes and church pray with me because we've been getting people sending us messages every week saying they're giving their life to Christ online. So would you pray with me? If that's you today, would you just right now believe that this was done for you? There's no special prayer formula except for simply doing this, accepting what Jesus has done for you, admitting that you are a sinner, admitting that, that you are not with him and that you need his forgiveness of your sin and that you already see how much he loves you, right? So believe in his love for you. Believe that you're part of his plan. Believe in what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross and he rose again. Believe that you are forgiven. And when you do, you receive an inheritance, a, a seal, a stamp that you are claimed and the Holy Spirit comes into your life and you are claimed by God. You are saved. You belong to him. Would you pray that? Let's pray a simple prayer. God, I see I need your son, Jesus. I see my sin and I see that he died for it. And I'm sorry about my sin. Forgive me. Thank you that you've already have forgiven me, but I believe that you have forgiven me now. I believe in Jesus and what he did for me. I believe that you love me and you're calling me home. And now I come to you and I thank you for doing all this for me. I simply accept and receive this love. I wanna be in your family. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. If you, if you said anything to God like that today, if you realize this and gave your heart to him, would you tell us, would you let us know in the, in the chat thread today? We also have um, an online uh, form that you could fill out to, to help us get connected with you and help you grow and understand more about your identity and your new life in Christ. So I pray that this uh, encourages you, church. Uh, wow, what a great task we have then to tell the world that God wants all men to be saved and he's made a way through Jesus Christ. So let's be, let's be courageous about it. Let's not be ashamed to share this amazing story of Jesus Christ and what he's done for us and that God is wanting us to come home to him to be in his family.